Hi, Breakthroughs listeners. This is Erin Spain, Communications Director at Weinberg. You may remember back in January, we did our first episode about the COVID-19 outbreak with Northwestern microbiologist Carla Satchel. She's leading an effort to investigate the structure biology of the components of COVID-19 to find a medication or vaccine to stop it. I recently spoke with Dr. Satchel for an update on her work. She's the director of the Center for Structural Genomics of Infectious Diseases at Northwestern, which is funded by the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Here's a short update from Dr. Satchel. So when we talked last, our group had really just gotten started and we were just in a waiting pattern, you know, hoping to get DNA to arrive so that we could do uh, structure biology in terms of getting started on drug discovery. Um, And so that was late January and it took till early February for those materials to start arriving. And what's just amazing is that in the six to seven weeks since that happened, our group alone has solved and deposited um, structures of, I think it's seven different proteins now. But we're just part of a worldwide effort is there's been just an amazing amount of research that's gone on and information that's become available in March. So I would think that, you know, all together, when we think about structural biology for drug discovery, you think about first off gene to structure, structure to lead and lead to drug. We have broken all records in terms of the gene to structure pace by bringing so much information to the community in only eight weeks period of time. Are you able to still perform all of the work that you need to do now that we're all doing the social distancing, fewer people are going into lab spaces? Tell me about what that's like. So that's really slowed things down a lot. So we are considered essential personnel because we're working on COVID-19 and I was able to petition to have my people work, but we are, um, that's first off only voluntary. And so I do have people in, in my group who live with or take care of elderly parents. And so they were put on leave along with the rest of the university employees. And then for those who are still coming in, we have, we're working split shifts. We try to keep no more than one person in the lab. Um, ideally at a time. And so that's really slowed things down. And again, I work for this aid institution and center, and that has occurred at all sites. Some of our sites have actually shut down entirely. But one of the the pluses is that at some of our sites, access to instrumentation uh, used to be a problem that you used to have to wait in long lines to get signed up for high, high level instruments, those instruments are only turned on now if you're doing coronavirus research. So some places, while we have less people working, we have unfettered access to um, instrumentation. A lot of what you're doing is sort of rebooting SARS research that had stopped several years ago. Just tell me a little bit about that. So one of the things that we, why we were able to do structure biology so fast is, you know, structure biology can be sort of hard trying to figure out the right condition, trying to figure out how to manipulate the proteins. And the fact that that was done for SARS, we just were able to pattern off what was done. And so it's much easier to sort of do a structure similar to one that's known. So we were able to pattern what we've done after that and then be able to quickly identify, well, how does this protein differ from the others? Also, what we're taking advantage of is that in some cases, lead compounds or small molecules that bound to these were identified. And so we can actually test right away whether those lead compounds are effective against this particular virus and these particular viral proteins and work from those lead compounds to start moving to drugs. And that's the phase where I think people are at now. We have the structures, we're getting the assays going and starting to work with lead compounds. And the goal, of course, is to find a vaccine or drug therapy, but you're also thinking long-term here. You want to try to identify drugs across coronaviruses because this may not be the last time that we have a novel coronavirus such as this. So if you just look historically, even since 2000, right, this is the third major epidemic of a coronavirus in only 20 years. So we should think that something unexpected could happen again in seven to eight years. And I think that we do need to be thinking about coronaviruses and transmission to humans as something that's going to keep happening. And we need drugs available that we can immediately bring into that space. So ideally right now, a drug would work against SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. 
because the chances are that'll also work against something seven to eight years from now that we don't even know is coming. Carla, is there anything else that you want to add um, that might be important since the last time we talked? The pace of research um, has been unprecedented. And also, it's been amazing the sharing of resources. I think that it used to be that if you had a new drug target, the first thing you did is kept it quiet. Now people are making a lot of information public. And that is, I think, just a great uh, blueprint for the community to follow, not only for this, but for the future, that there is a capacity for innovation to be brought to drug design and to healthcare. And maybe we should be more open about it and find a path not to keep it all closed in. And that may help us really go after other infectious diseases, but also heart disease and cancer. Open science really helps. And, I, and I'm really proud to be involved in the Open Science Initiative. Um, that's participating in COVID-19 research. Can you just detail sort of the news that's been made um, since the end of January from your from your group? So we've put out two press releases. The first was the press release just with regards to uh, the first structure that we solved, which was uh, Andre Wachimiak's group at University of Chicago solved the structure of NSP15. And that is an RNA so that is actually a great drug target. Um, his group went on and solved uh, three or four other structures. Um, and then we put one out from Northwestern when we solved the structure of the methyltransferase, which is this really important protein that's involved in mRNA development. Um, and then I think that we have some extremely exciting work going on in proteases. And I think that that's going to be able to be publicly available, you know, probably in another two, two or so weeks. Um, not quite sure, um, but I think we'll probably put a press release out when that happens again. I think we won't put a press release out now until we really feel we have a drug that we have to talk about. Thanks for listening and be sure to subscribe to hear the latest research on COVID-19 from Feinberg Investigators.